Senator, thank you so much. Thank you so much, and thank you for all the work that you do. Um, you know, one of the things that we found out this week is that when, uh, when, when we're just talking about the things that um, we know are issues across the world or across our country, it doesn't seem to have much impact, and, and we don't seem to get a lot of attention. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, a face gets attached to an issue face gets attached and, and a sound gets attached to an issue and it changes the outcome. That's why the work that you're doing is so important because it brings faces and sounds and images to the problem and it moves hearts and minds and it gives us an opportunity to really pursue the global change that we need to protect children. Um, so uh, this isn't a new uh, work for me. Um, as, as first uh, North Dakota's Attorney General, I spent a lot of time working in the domestic violence space. And I always tell people, you know, when I started out as Attorney General, all of the domestic violence programs in the country were pretty much in public health. They weren't considered criminal justice issues. It wasn't, it wasn't the, the work, but some, some great work of advocates in Duluth and across the country, we started growing a movement that changed outcomes for women and families. Is it perfect? No, but it's much better than what it was in 1992. And so um, uh, we also have been spending a lot of time um, in my career working especially um, with Native children and trying to get attention to the issues of Native American children. And um, I always tell the story that uh, I used to go as an attorney general every year to the um, Department of Interior, which is where a lot of Native American programming is located. And I would um, spend time talking to the secretary or to the solicitor general, and, and I would say the same thing every year. And everybody would know I would say the same thing every year that the Department of Interior has a unique, in my opinion, fiduciary relationship with Native children. Um, when you look at the statistics, which at the time were deplorable and now are horrific, um, that, that that relationship is not being, um, that the obligations are not being fulfilled in that relationship. And um, <clears throat> I remember the last year I went, every year they would say, well, I, I, I share your concerns. Senator and Janet Reno, who was the uh, uh, head of the Department of Justice, uh, Attorney General, would share my concerns, and they shared my concerns, and they they knew that what I was saying was true, and they really shared my concerns. And so, the last year that I was Attorney General, and I had a chance to raise these issues, I said, you know, I think it's wonderful that you're aware of these problems and that you're sharing my concerns. I would just like once for you guys to say you're going to do something about it. Take action. I mean, it's not enough to be empathetic. Empathy without action is, is pity. It's not, it's not um, uh, productive. And so we have a chance every day to take action. I have a chance every day in my office to take action on behalf of children, whether it's children who are trafficked, whether it's children who are um, malnourished and stunted, whether it is children who are um, being raised in slavery, um, uh, child slavery, not just sex trafficking, but um, work trafficking, whether it is children who have been traumatized by the experiences in their home country, by their experiences in, in refugee camps. Um, and, and one thing that we know is that trauma plays such a role in the future of young people. And we're, that's why we really have begun this work in, in trauma-informed programs. We've begun the work of trying to educate about what, what, what does that mean and why is that important. And we know that um, from the work that we've, we're doing and the work that researchers are doing, that a child who has experienced adverse childhood experiences of four or more has, uh, in this country, if, if nothing changes, has a 20-year less life expectancy. And think about that. And it's not just behavior and mental health issues. It's not just um, death by suicide. This is cancers. This is diabetes. This is hypertension. This, this, this toxic stress has a dramatic and lasting effect, especially on the little ones, because it just becomes so debilitating. And so um, we've got so much work to do. We've got to understand um, the dynamic um, physiologically, the dynamic of, of stress. We've got to understand what children are going through. We've got to train professionals to not say, why are you behaving like that? And instead of ask what happened to you. We've got to do all the things that we know are important. But, you know, I'm going to just close with one last thought. 
we all hear that children are our most important resource. It's just, it just flows out of people's mouth. Ch children are our future, they are our most important resource. I, I, I tell a story about being in um, a big box store and, and uh, uh, a father who, this was before you had bathrooms that were, would accommodate families, a father had a child and he didn't want to take his child into the bathroom, but he obviously had to go to the bathroom. So he took this toddler and he put her on top of a pallet of, of plywood and went to the bathroom. You know, North Dakota's a pretty safe place, but I thought, I'm not. I'm going to stand here and make sure she's okay. And then I thought, would he have thrown a diamond necklace up there? Would he have thrown his wallet up there? Would he have taken anything that had that monetary value and put it up there? And I don't fault him. I mean, I'm not criticizing him. But I am saying that we need to examine how we as a culture and how we as a society and how we as the world really do value children. And, and that value needs to be expressed not in empathy and not in you know, um, uh, platitudes. It needs to be expressed in action. We need to change outcomes. And so um, I am highly motivated to continue to do this work. Um, it has motivated me my whole life. Um, I, I, I want to maybe tell a story that um, for Native people, one of the worst things that happened in their life was children taken away from their parents. Um, the boarding school experience has created generational trauma that um, will take generations and generations to erase. Um, and it has taken away the cultural connection and the family connections. It has done serious, serious damage to a culture. And I got an email um, last night or a text last night from a friend of mine who's a district court judge in North Dakota. He um, is a good friend and we have done a lot of work on these issues together. And he, um, you can tell how traumatized he is by the past, week's past events because it brought back for him what he sees in his courtroom every day, the trauma that still exists as a result of separation of children from their parents. And so we have to be better than that. We have to be sure about who we are. And we have to say never again. And we have to work for the change that we need. And so that change, to me, um, is, is difficult to achieve. But if we focus on our kids, if we focus on the kids, um, we'll all do a lot better. And I, I did a project when I was Attorney General looking at juvenile justice, and, and we were having a lot of challenges for young people in my state. And so we were doing a series of, of meetings. I was doing a series of meetings to talk about what we could do that would address more, more needs, and, you know, and, and honestly talk about criminal justice reform as it related to juveniles. And um, when, when I was in Minot, North Dakota, um, at the end of a meeting, uh, a woman got up, she was a school teacher, and she said, I want you to know I've sat here for the better part of two hours listening. She said, and the one thing I will tell you that, that um, brings joy to my heart is everybody who got up did not talk about those kids or that group. They talked about our kids. And so we have a whole world full of our kids. They belong to all of us. And if we truly believe they are the future, then we should be protecting them, nourishing them, educating them, and we should be putting um, uh, opportunities for their families to thrive together. So we won't stop with this work. We won't stop with um, uh, the uh, commitment that we have made in our office. We will continue to fight this fight because the future of our world depends on it. Thank you so much for letting me come.